Hi guys, my name's Matt. Uh, I'm from Grace Community Church in Edenbridge and I hope you're all well today. It's a real privilege to be sharing with you today and thank you today for giving me the opportunity to share this very short message. When Dave asked me to share this some scripture in Mark chapter 2, I was like, okay, that's interesting. I've not done anything like this before. Uh, and I've got to be honest, I was a little bit nervous. But in the end, I thought, why not? If it goes wrong, then he'll never ask me again. Only joking, Dave. So here goes. First of all, uh, before I get started, I'd like to pray. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to share this morning. I pray that you would give me the wisdom to share boldly, accurately, and that my words would be God-breathed. I pray that this message will encourage us, but more importantly, it glorifies you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So the title for this short message is... Jesus forgives and heals a paralysed man. If you have a Bible, you can read with me uh, from Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Which says this from verse 1. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the front door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralysed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralysed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to this paralysed man, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, he took his mat, and he walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. So in this passage of scripture, um, I think it's fair to say that there may be quite a lot to unpack. Um, but I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that stand out to me personally. So we start off with Jesus entering Capernaum. The people heard about this and they all gathered in large numbers to the point where there was no more room. Not even outside the front door because they all wanted to see Jesus and hear what he had to say. So we see that in verse 3, four men were carrying a paralysed man, but they couldn't get in as it was rammed full of people. So they came up with, shall we say, an interesting idea. Now, I would have loved to have been there when they came up with this idea of going through the roof. I mean, could you imagine the conversation? One of the men says to his three mates, Well, lads, we can't get in. There's only one thing for it. Oh, yeah, what's that? We're going in through the roof. I mean, could you imagine what uh, that happening today? I think the owner of the house would have something to say about that. Let alone the poor paralysed man. He probably didn't have much of a choice. You're going in, mate, but don't worry, you'll be fine. Then they begin the process of breaking through the roof. So put yourself in Jesus' shoes for a second. Imagine that you are preaching, and as you're getting into it, there's a distraction. But this is no normal distraction, not like a baby crying or someone running around. Oh no, there is dirt and debris falling through the ceiling, and a hole opens up with four men looking down at you. And then they lower a man down, right from this hole right in front of you. I don't know about you, but I'd be like, what on earth is going on? But not Jesus. In verse 5, he sees the faith, and interestingly, he says to the paralysed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, this is very interesting, because even though Jesus could see that the man was paralysed, he didn't say, you are healed first, and then your sins are forgiven. I believe Jesus' focus and priority was on the forgiveness of sins being more important than him healing the man's body initially. In other words, the spiritual need was more important than the than the uh, physical need. So I was reminded uh, when I first became a care worker years ago and I looked after a gentleman who had terminal cancer. 
I struck up a good friendship with him and his wife. As time went by, I told them that I was a Christian, and it turned out that the gentleman's wife was a Christian, but he wasn't. <clears throat> I began to share my faith with him, and at first he rejected it, and he said, I just don't understand. I, I don't get it. I don't understand this. Like the four men, I didn't give up at the first hurdle. I showed faith, and I asked to pray for him, that yes, he would be healed, but God would reveal himself. And I prayed that the Holy Spirit would reveal himself to help him understand things. So I left it for a while until one day I turned up and his wife looked happy about something. I said, uh, why are you happy? What, what's up? And she goes, um, he has something to say to you. So I said, okay. I went through to the sitting room where he was and he told me that uh, he had given his life to the Lord. I mean, I was over the moon at this and God had really answered prayer and revealed himself and caused the man to surrender to Jesus. The gentleman sadly passed away, and even though his body wasn't healed, I believe that Jesus' priority was to give and save him above all else. I was there when the gentleman had passed away, and one of the first things I said to his wife was, he is with the Lord. And there was a kind of joy and a comfort uh, with that, and I felt that God honoured my faith, like the four men with their paralysed friend. Even though the gentleman's body wasn't saved, his soul was, and he's now in glory, praise God. So back to scripture, we get to verse 6. So we have some teachers of the law getting, getting offended by um, what Jesus has said and thinking to themselves, this fellow is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately. I love that word, immediately. Jesus knew in his spirit what they were thinking in their hearts. And he called them out on it. I don't know about you, but that would have terrified me. If Jesus confronted me face to face about something I just thought about, I mean, that would have kind of freaked me out. But Jesus said, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat and walk. But I want you to know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he says to the man, I tell you to get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and he walked out in full view of them all. It's quite interesting that the crowd wouldn't move to let this paralysed man in, but they certainly made room for him when he walked out. The Bible said that this amazed everyone. I mean, I can't help but think that's a bit of an understatement. Uh, if that was me, my jaw would have literally hit the floor. Uh, not out of disbelief, but because that would have been totally awesome to have witnessed. So what shall I conclude about this passage? Well, firstly, I think this is about faith on our part. I think, this, I think that we need to be like the four men that brought their friend to Jesus. The paralysed man was beyond the help of his friends, and I believe that they did all they could do for him, ultimate, but ultimately he needed Jesus. And they knew this, and that's why they went to great lengths to bring him before Jesus. Jesus honours their faith, firstly by forgiving the man's sins, as Jesus has the authority to do so, and then he heals him. I believe Jesus' main priority was forgiving the man first, at, as this was ultimately more important before he healed him. And the teachers of the law couldn't say anything more to Jesus when he demonstrated this. Lastly, I would like to encourage you all to continue to pray uh, and to believe in Jesus for salvation and healing for your friends and family that may not know him yet. And to persevere and not to give up the first hurdle you face, because God will honour your faith and you will see great things. Well, that's it from me. Thanks for listening. God bless. And I hope to see you all soon. Take care.